So thank you, Sean. And our other speaker tonight is uh, Cameron Jones, who's an actor and an, and an ambassador of Generation Zero. And if I can just tell you a little story. Um, so during the, the height of the, uh, the unitary plan debate uh, last year, Deputy Mayor Penny Hulse, um, also chair of the Auckland Development Committee, and particularly uh, my, my, one of my team, uh, Penny Purrett, were out on the barricades every night in the community halls of Auckland, facing trenchant opposition from people who didn't want to see the quality, compact vision of the Auckland plan. And there's one group that was actually absolutely brilliantly supportive of uh, the, the council uh, beyond anyone else, really, and that was Generation Zero. Uh, they were right there for us, and, and uh, so it's a great pleasure to have uh, Cameron Jones uh, speak tonight. He's a, a graduate of Toi Whakari, New Zealand Drama School, at the end of 2012. Uh, he already has an ex extensive list of acting credits to his name. Not only does he profile on the cast of Shortland Street uh, on Ambulance Officer Dallas Adams' role, uh, but he's also had a part on Peter Jackson's The Hobbit. I'm just looking at his feet there. <laughs> uh, he, as well as uh, numerous televised roles. Uh, currently living in Auckland, Cameron is passionate about regenerating the environment and is proud to be an ambassador for both the New Zealand Shark Alliance and Generation Zero. Generation Zero is a youth-led organisation founded with the central purpose of providing solutions for New Zealand to cut carbon pollution through smarter transport, livable cities and independence from fossil fuels. Please welcome Cameron Jones. <laughs> Good evening. It is an absolute honour to be up here speaking to all of you in what will be remembered as a huge step forward for Auckland City. A change that having been part of, I will look back in very fond memory. We are writing a new chapter in Auckland, uh, in Auckland City's history and hopefully New Zealand's. Why is tonight special? Because it seems we've come to an agreement, a contract of sorts. I see it as a treaty almost, that adopting a low carbon plan for our biggest and best city is no longer a dream for greenies or hippies. The world is waking up. Being low carbon is not about left versus right wing, economics versus environment, profit versus sustainability. We are now aware that these things are integrated and in fact, when in harmony, there are optim optimum results for both. I quote Tony Jupiter who wrote the book, What Has Nature Ever Done For Us? Nature is in fact the source and very basis of our economic welfare and prosperity." Um, uh, end quote. Businesses are now becoming well aware of the huge benefits to be had from being environmentally friendly and low carbon. In fact, the benefits to the human economy that come from nature have an estimated value every year of around double the gross, gross, global gross domestic product. When an entire city can jump on board this initiative, the impacts are huge. Not only are businesses thriving and growth increases, but the well-being of every citizen does too. I am well aware, though, of the change and the, and the fear that this change can bring and, and, the, and the fear that can encompass such a task. It's a huge risk and a huge step for a city. It's not the norm. But you know what it is? It's the future. It's forward thinking. It's innovation which leads to prosperity. It's the kind of ideas that will make us known around the world. What excites me is knowing that other cities and countries will look to us as a model and as an example, and that's what we want to be in this world, leaders. Places in Europe have already adopted low-carbon planning, and they've seen massive gains, Denmark being my favourite example. Look, the Industrial Revolution served its purpose, coal served its purpose, but now we know that it is no longer has a purpose, it no longer has a future, not in this city. Rather than fighting against the forces of nature, we are now working and sharing with nature. Architecture is now based on some of nature's most beautiful designs. Technology is harnessing the free power of nature rather than competing against it. And most importantly, humans are respecting nature rather than trying to champion it. Why? Well, for a start, we know we can't and won't win, not long term anyway. And secondly, we just have so much to learn from them. Like I said before, this is about harmonisation between natural resources and human growth. It's happening. It's exciting. It's inspiring. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the beautiful future of Auckland City.